Good evening all my friends out there in the YouTube comic community. Comic Order 410 here tonight, uh, bringing you part 18 of my Keys variants and such. And I hope everyone's doing well. I'm going to start off with uh, some books here. I just finished this up. This is uh, Fantagore Press's Den series by Richard Corbin. And uh, most of you know I'm a big fan of his. And uh, this character appeared in a lot of different you know, indie stuff in the 70s. Um, old uh, Fantagore stuff and, and Heavy Metal magazine. Also, uh, they did a Den skit in the animated movie Heavy Metal. And he was voiced by um, a young John Candy. So, big fan of that. Uh, here's den number one. This is number two. Corbin's beautiful covers, as always. And it's kind of cool because Fanagor is the one, you know, I believe they published his first appearance in uh, magazines. So... Uh, here's number three. I can get some focus here. And most of these are in pretty good shape, too. Uh, den number four. Number five. Really love this cover here. That's why I love Richard Corbin's art. Den number six. Another gorgeous cover. Um, then number seven. A couple of these have some creases, but just glad to have them all to read finally. Number eight. Great covers. Number nine. And then number ten. And that's the complete run of this Fanagor series. Another, another Richard Corbin masterpiece. Um, big Space Ghost fan. Uh, this is Hanna Barbera's Super TV Heroes uh, number three. It's definitely got some problems here. I'd give this maybe maybe a five to a six. Um, probably closer to a six. It's got a little bit of spine rolling. Some definite creases. A little rubbing on that corner. Not too bad, though. Um, this is the second appearance of Space Ghost in comics. Uh, you know, his cartoon was first, and Gold Key did a Space Ghost one-shot that predates this series. And that was his first appearance in comics. I'd like to get that someday. But uh, got Hanna-Barbera Super TV Heroes number three. And it also has Young Samson and Goliath, Birdman, and Shazam. Um, he was also in uh, Hanna-Barbera Super TV Heroes number 6, which I do not have. Need to get that one. But uh, this is the other Space Ghost one. This is number 7. Also has the Hercul Herculoids in here. And I'm also a fan of them. And this one's in a little better shape. Actually much better shape. It's got, still got some problems there on the spine, down there that staple, a little bit on, actually, yeah, both bottom corners. Still pretty bright, though. Big Space Ghost fan. Uh, this is, I believe, the second Hawkeye series, number one, and his new series is just really hot right now. But uh, I'm not sure who inked this, but this is one of Scott Colin's better covers that I've seen. His art's really hit or miss for me. Um, he's done some books like Flash that I really like, but it's hit or miss. Um, this is the Hellblazer special, number one, by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. And uh, Oddfellow's Thoughts just showed off. He has a beautiful, complete run of this book, and it's one hell of a read. Uh, so many great writers on this. And um said it before, Paul Jenkins was super nice when I met him, and uh they really need to to reprint. Maybe maybe with the show coming up, they will finally. But uh, they need to reprint his run on Hellblazer because last I checked, Paul Jenkins' run on Hellblazer was the longest consecutive issue run that's never been reprinted or collected between Marvel and DC, and that's a shame. But uh, great book and check out Oddfellow Oddfellow's thoughts uh, 
video showing that collection because it's a nice one. Got the complete run. Um, this is Human Torch Volume 1. And this is also, I got a complete run of this. And this is the first issue. Doesn't look too bad, really. Looks pretty nice. Um, this is a John Romita Sr. cover. And this series only lasted eight issues. Had a bunch of different, I mean, God, uh, and Dick Ayers, I think, did some covers. Um, Basema might have done one. I know he did some interiors. You had Romita Sr., uh, Larry Lieber. Don Wilson. So many people did covers on this, so I'm not going to be able to get them all straight. But I do know number one was uh, Ramita Sr. This might... This is probably either Lieber or um, Wilson. It's Human Torch number two. As you can see, it has a little dating. Red pen dating there. But still pretty decent copy. Got some spine rolling. Not too significant. Human Torch number three, this has some problems on the spine. This is probably Ron Wilson. His his style always rang, rings a little bit of uh, Jack Kirby's to me. So I think, I, don't know, I could be wrong, I think that might be him, but so many people worked on this book, it's, uh, it's kind of a shot in the dark if you don't know for sure which. But uh, here's number four, Human Torch number four. Fighting the infamous Paste Pot Pete, who has been the butt of many jokes in the Marvel Universe over the years, and that's a pretty nice copy of number four. Uh, here's number five, Human Torch number five. Awesome cover there, not sure who did that one. Again, pretty, pretty sweet copy. Uh, number six, this is a nice copy, except it does have some pretty, pretty significant spine rolling. Uh, it's even though, but it's rolled, a lot of white showing there. Um, this is number six. Fantastic Four, obviously. You knew they had the cameo in Human Torch's book at uh, some point. And here's Human Torch number seven. Very awesome cover where he fights uh, Namor. And you all know of their classic Golden Age confrontations. And uh, this is Human Torch number eight. This is the final issue of uh, this series. So very happy to have a complete run of that. And I put it together pretty cheap. You guys can probably find that book pretty cheap. Um, here's um, Huntress number one. Joe Staten cover. Didn't get to meet him last year. He came to my local convention, but I didn't get to meet him. Um, some people hate this book. Some people love it. Um, I'm one of the latter. I think it was a really well done series by Brad Meltzer, um, Rag Morales on it, and Mike Bear uh, inking, who I've met. I met him when I was a youngster. He uh, he had to have lived around around here because he would do a lot of little, really small, rinky-dink local shows, too. He'd show up sometimes, but he was very nice. Um, have some Batmans he signed for me, but uh, anyway, big fan of Mike Bear. You don't see him as much in comics anymore, but uh, covers by Michael Turner. And I, I recommend this. I think it's a great read. If nothing else, there's my number one. That's my unread copy. If nothing else, for this issue right here, this is uh, Identity Crisis 3. And as you can see by the Turner cover there, that's, um, this is a one word, Deathstroke. They kind of, Brad Meltzer kind of showed everyone why Deathstroke is a top tier villain in the DC universe with this series. Uh, he, he takes on the Justice League single-handedly in this issue and does an amazing job. It's a great, great fight. And uh, I think the whole series is good, but if nothing else, it's worth reading for that badass issue. And Marvel and DC often um, copy each other, and I just thought it was funny. Right when Identity Crisis came out and was a big deal, Marvel did this right after Identity Disc. Which wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that big a deal. It's these villains here... Going to steal this identity disc, it had, uh, you know, Sandman, Bullseye, Juggernaut, Sabretooth, Vulture, and Deadpool. Wasn't a bad read, actually, but just, you know, it was just like, you know, when they brought, you know, Marvel brings back um, Bucky as the Winter Soldier. So right, right about the same time, uh, DC brings back Jason Todd from the dead as the Red Hood. So they just, they just kind of, when they have a big 
ploy they they would often kind of mimic each other in a way I noticed. But anyway, moving on. Um fan of a lot of different Disney stuff. Um not all of it, but definitely a big Disney fan in many ways and a uh, big fan of the Incredibles. And this is number 1 of the Dark Horse mini. It's got some rubbing there unfortunately, but just more to read these. Um this is the second series by Boom Studio, a uh, Boom Kids rather. But it is owned by Boom Studios, Kaboom, whatever it is, is uh, Kaboom is what Boom Kids is called now. Sorry. Anyway, this is um, cover E, the variant cover of Boom's Incredibles number one. I showed this before. This is a pretty cool series because Mark Wade wrote it, and uh, he signed it for me, and Mike Mignola did this variant, and he signed it too. Happy to have that one. This is another... Um, Boom Kids Incredibles variant to number one. Um, doesn't even say which cover this is, but it's uh, limited to 500. Pretty cool. So, obviously, how it's supposed to look. This is, um, you know, this is made to look aged, made to look like an older issue. This is a variant to Boom Kids Incredibles number three. And Mark Wade signed that as well. Variants by Scioli, and it's limited to 500. Even looks like it's torn there. It's a very cool animated movie. Um, anybody who likes comics would probably like The Incredibles if you haven't seen it. Um, big Raiders of the Lost Ark fan also. And um, got my copy signed by Walt Simonson. He wrote this series. Um, he didn't do the cover to number one. I think it was... I want to say it's Gene Day, I think it is. But there's my copy of number one. I think it's from like 81, 82 when the movie came out. Had these as a kid, and I got better copies. These are all pretty sharp. And Simonson was so nice, he signed them all for me. And uh, Walt did do the covers to Raiders of the Lost Ark number two and three. And there's his cover to number two. And cover to part three. By Walt Simonson. Very cool guy. Um, this is the adaptation of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Number one. Number two. Butch Geist on the covers, I think. On, yep, on all three. And here's Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom number three. And uh, this has a small rip up at the top, but uh, this is the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, number one. Awesome cover there by Terry Austin, who's a great artist, but he's such an amazing anchor. That's usually the capacity you see him working in. But he's one of the best anchors in the history of the business, in my opinion. Um, Indiana Jones and the Tomb of the Gods. Dark Horse did some good uh, Indiana Jones miniseries. And this is number one of that. And I believe this is a Dave Dorman cover. It's really beautiful. Could be wrong. I think it's Dorman, though. Uh, Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, number one. I, I really like that uh, TV series, The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. I bought all the DVD sets. They were like 80 bucks when they came out, and I was like, no way. And uh, got them at Costco for like 20 bucks a pop, so I was happy about that years later. Anyhow, uh, this is Countdown to Infinite Crisis, number one. This is the, I'm sorry, this is the one shot, not number one. This led into the mini, I apologize, the 80 page one shot. Very cool cover. Don't want to spoil it, but somebody dies in that issue. For those of you who haven't read it. Um, this is Infinite Crisis, number one, one of the many, you know, crisis events uh, DC's done, but this was pretty well done. It was by Jeff Johns and uh, gorgeous art by Phil Jimenez, but this is the Jim Lee cover to number one. Gorgeous cover. Um, Infinity Gauntlet, number one. Got this one signed by George Perez last year, and this is... One of my favorite big events ever. Amazing read. Jim Starlin. Nobody writes Thanos like Jim Starlin. And uh, 
the Thanos quest that leads into this is is my favorite Thanos story, and this is a close second. This is an awesome read. Highly recommend it if you haven't read it. It's worth picking up to trade. But uh, awesome Perez cover there on number one. And uh, George Perez did all the covers on these. Um, this is Infinity Gauntlet number two. Number three. Awesome Perez cover. And these are all my unread copies. These are all probably near mint. Beautiful cover. Nobody does a jam cover like George Perez. Just nobody can squeeze as many characters onto one cover. He's he's the master. And then right next issue he can do an amazing cover with just one character on it. Come and get me. That says it all. This Thanos kicks so much ass in this series. Um kicks so much ass it, in fact, all the Celestials and uh, Cosmic Entities, you know, Galactus and uh, Ego, all of them show up like, uh, hey, we got to confront this guy. He's getting too powerful. Freaking awesome stuff. And here's the final issue of uh, Infinity Gauntlet number six. George Perez signed that for me, too. Amazing, amazing miniseries. Marvel... Marvel should bring uh, Perez and Starlin back to do their next big event because, uh, in my opinion, they've been a lot of the same thing with DC. A lot of their big events have been hit or miss for a while. There's been some good ones, there's been a lot of blown opportunities. But, uh, this was the follow up Infinity War. It was good, but not quite as good. And, uh, I believe it's Ron Lim on the cover here. But, uh, it was still good. It wasn't quite as good as the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, this is early Todd McFarlane DC work, DC's Invasion 3 issue mini. That's, uh, number one. Early Todd McFarlane cover. Here's number, book two, Battleground Earth. And honestly, it's been so long since I've read those, I don't, don't remember how good it is. But, uh, this is Invasion book three. Very good cover there. I think that's McFarlane still. They might have pulled him off after first issue. I can't remember. Because uh, his early work doesn't look the same as his work on, like, Amazing Spider-Man. But, um, not sure if this is Volume 2, Volume 3, or what. I think this is probably Volume 3, but not sure. But Iron Fist relaunch, issue number one. Kevin Lau on art, who did uh, the Vampy mini and uh, Nine Volt, a couple other things. Very cool. And this is an awesome series. A lot of people are trying to go back and um, get now. I mean, Mortal Iron Fist. Amazing art by David Aha, who's just blowing up on Hawkeye now. And look who wrote it. Head Brew Baker and Matt Fraction together. I highly, highly recommend this series. Very good. Got, I have the full run of this. I'm missing one issue. I can't remember. It's like 20, 21 or something. Missing one issue, but um, this is the Immortal Iron Fist number 10. This is the David Aha zombie variant. Or no, I'm sorry, that's not David Aha. It's uh, Carrie Andrews. But yes, very cool Iron Fist zombie with the bloody fist with the heart dripping blood in it. But yeah, one hell of a creative team. And uh, Kano inked them on here. One hell of a creative team on that book. It's a high, high recommendation from me. Um, admittedly, I have some of the trades. I wish I had more, uh, issues of Invincible. It's, uh, obviously written by Robert Kirkman, Kirk, Kirkman, uh, you know, the Walking Dead guy. I'm sure you all know him. But, uh, I actually really, really like Invincible. Surprised they haven't tried to adapt this into some kind of movie or something, but, uh, excellent read, and I'd like to get number one, but, I don't know, you... People price it unreasonably based on his success on Walking Dead right now. So, anyway, this is Invincible Zero. It was only 50 cents. And I did, I do have, like, a couple issues, and I was able to get number two. I saw it somewhere for, like, ten bucks a long time ago, and I picked it up. But, uh, do need to get number one, and I'd like to get more issues of that, but... I've read the first several trades, and it's it's a fantastic book. And, uh, again, I recommend picking that up. But that'll do it for this installment. Thank you all so much, uh, as always, for checking out my books. Appreciate it. 
Hope everyone's doing well, as well as your families. Um, all of you take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your comic book reading.